Hi, this is Cody. Just wanted to show you guys a little bit about the M20R. It's uh, available in the marketplace for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Um, just wanted to give you a video that wasn't 30 minutes long to show you how to use it. So to start out, we have this little tablet here. Um, these control all your doors, outside power, that kind of thing. And then if you hit next here, this is how you can start the airplane. You can be cold and dark, ready for taxi, or ready for takeoff. So actually change the configuration of the input airplane. I'm just going to hit cold and dark and hit done here. And uh, the plane should reset here. There we go. Okay. Sometimes it takes a click or two. Now to get the tablet out of the way, you just click this black frame of it. To uh, start the plane up, we're going to select the fuel tank. There's a whole checklist uh, available. I can show you how to get that checklist, but uh, for now I'm just going to go over the basics. You're turning your avionics and your batteries on. If for some reason your battery's dead, you can switch the battery here to the second battery. You're going to want to uh, push the propellers forward and the mixture all the way rich. Leave the throttle back and then you turn the uh, key here. Oh, you actually, you want the boost fuel pump on as well. Alrighty. So you just rotate this until it hits start. And it'll automatically go back. Once we're started up, you can turn off the boost fuel pump. This boost pump will only be used if you're running low on fuel. Or there's a couple other scenarios where it comes available if you have hot starts or that kind of thing. But um, for the most part, you're never going to need that one. So um, to take off, I generally use one notch of flaps. You can take off with no flaps. And uh, let's get going. Oh, I forgot to take off my parking brake. That's down here. Now, trim is really important on this plane to keep it flying level. Um, it is pretty sensitive, so you are going to want to make sure you have your trim set up. So, we're going fast enough here. I'm going to lift off. And it is retractable landing gear. The gear retraction is right over here. And your flap button is right down here to retract your flaps. Now the autopilot on this is a little different than other planes that you might be familiar with. Um, once you hit the autopilot master, it doesn't actually keep the plane from falling out of the sky. You need to tell it what to do. So um, we're going to zoom in over here. I'm going to turn on my altitude hold. Um, so it should be holding the altitude. And I'm going to give it a heading hold so it doesn't keep uh, turning off here. That's a little steep. I'm going to make sure I correct that manually and it should be going to this heading bug right here I'm not sure why it's turning the wrong way here here it goes it's starting to turn right now so you can adjust the heading using this knob right here and it should turn right on course to where I have that heading knob selected so now we're holding at 800 feet right now that's just when I click the altitude button on we do have our changing altitude screen right here you can actually set a new altitude by turning these knobs here I'm gonna set it to 2,000 feet and then you click arm now if you uh, click on this little uh, thing to push it in I have clicked it up one here now it's saying that we're climbing at 500 feet per minute and you can see that with the vertical speed right here if I rotate this knob I can actually make it climb faster or slower and once it gets to the uh, setting, I think I said 2,000 feet, it'll actually stop climbing. If you use the engage button, it'll just keep climbing forever. So right now we're climbing up to about 2,000 feet. And as you can see, it's on my compass heading. And we do have a uh, little map here. So while we're flying around here, I'll show you how to set up ILS on this plane. You're going to want to uh, make sure you have the VLOC set to the frequency that you want to use. Uh, for the airport that I'm going to, it's going to be 111.10. As you can see, using this knob, I can uh, change the number beneath it, and then you just click that to switch it. If you push in on the cursor here, it switches to the COM. Now this will actually, uh, this frequency here is what the plane actually does while it's landing for ILS. The frequency down here is what shows on your ILS display. So you want to make sure those both match. And that's going to show up right in this uh, screen right here. So this bar will show your uh, glide slope. And this shows if you need to go left or right to get to it. 
Um, so right now I'm going to pause the video and get myself lined up for the airport and we'll be right back. Alrighty, so I'm back. We're almost lined up for landing. I just got to turn left a little bit here. Um, so for the landing, we're going to make sure that this switch right here is on nav. If it's on GPS, it'll basically follow anything that's on your GPS. You can set up flight plans and everything else like you normally would. But uh, for the ILS landing, we want that on nav. We do have our frequency put in here, and we have our frequency put in here. And we're just going to hit the nav button down here. So now it's going to follow this screen. It's basically saying we need to go a little bit left. And then that's going to be our glide slope. Once that comes down, it'll grab the glide scope. But we do need to hit the approach button before that. If you want to make sure you're actually on the beacon, you can hit this nav one button right here. And uh, you hear the beeping so that you know you're on the beacon. Should beep again when we hit the outer marker. And that's when I'll switch it to the approach mode. It's just selecting that button right here. I normally, for the approach, want to keep around 80 knots. I'm a little above that now at 90. Um, on the final approach, keep around 80 knots. I do keep uh, flaps at 1. There's my flap indicator right over here. So I'm going to drop my flaps 1 notch right now, and I'm going to drop my gear. That was right up here. So we're pretty much configured to land. The master caution was just saying that my gear was going down. If you ever want to check if your gear is down and locked, it's actually right down here by the fuel. Also, you do need to manually change from left to right fuel tank as needed. When you do change tanks, you should use the boost pump while switching tanks. So, um, we do have our airspeed right over here. Most of the time you want to stay in the green. Yellow is only for if you're in really calm air, but most of the time you're not going to fly around in the yellow anyway. Uh, let me just take a look at how we're doing here on my GPS. Looks like we're pretty straight in. We just get a better view over the window. So the airport's still pretty far away. As this gets closer in, I'll make sure we're on approach mode. Now you can also adjust your airspeed right there. And as you can see, it's no longer following my little heading knob here because uh, we are on nav mode, not he uh, heading mode anymore. So I'm going about 80 knots. We're configured pretty well for landing at this point. Now I just want to make a note on the primary flight display here. The... Uh, pitch that you're at is at the top of this uh, little triangle, not the bottom. So we're actually about 5 degrees nose up right now. I'm slowing down towards 75 knots and I don't want to stall, so I'm going to put a little speed on it. I'd like to be around 80 or 90 at this point, even up to 100 and then slow down to, um, you know, 80 on the final approach. The plane does slow down pretty well. Um, it also does have speed brakes. I don't know where the button is to activate them from inside the plane. If anyone can find that, uh, let me know in the comments. But for now, I'll show you them on the outside here. Got a lot noisier here, so I'll speak up. But um, you see these little things right over here. If I hit my uh, button for it, you see those popped up. I'm going to put them right back down, though. I'm a little surprised I haven't heard the uh, any of the other beacons yet, but we're still not that close, so I'm not too concerned. I'm going to turn on approach mode, though, because we're getting closer here. I want to make sure it does grab the glide slope. So I'll show you more about this later, but on top of the visors on the back of them. You just click on the visor and it goes down. These are all the different engine pressure settings you want for different altitudes. And um, this is also in the paperwork that they give you with the plane. I'll show you the folder that all this information is in. But um, basically, you, um, those are all manifold pressure readings. And you want to make sure this matches right here 
that would be the uh, outer marker right there that's beeping. We're already on the approach though, so we're good. Runway's right there. It's not really lit up as well as it should be. And it should be grabbing the glide slope. It's saying that we got to go a little further down, but... Yeah, we're, our vertical speed is going down to about negative 600 at the moment. So it grabbed the glide slope and it's taking us in. Now, as you see, my speed speeded up quite a bit, so I'm pulling that back. I want to slow down to about 80 to be on vinyl. Now, in this plane, you do want to flare a little bit, but you don't want to be too aggressive on that. It's got a very low tail, and you can uh, hit that tail pretty hard if you're not careful. So, just want to be uh, aware of that. So, as we have a minute or two while we're coming on in here, want to go over the mix settings with you. Um, this is your mix control right here. Now, when you're at landing, taking off, you want that at full mix. If you do want to change your propeller RPM and make it a little quieter, you can pull this back slightly. Most of the time, you're going to want to be between 2300 and 2500 RPMs. That's indicated right here. Obviously, I'm not uh, cruising right now, so my propeller is all the way down. If I went full throttle, you see it jumps right up to 2500. But uh, I don't want to gain any more speed because I'm on uh, approach here. But generally, we're going to use this uh, display right here to help us with our mix. This says the house por horsepower that the uh, engine is putting out. So you can adjust the mix to get the most horsepower there. I'll show you that in a minute after we're uh, done on our landing here. Also, just to go over a couple other things while we're on final here. Um, here is your lighting. This knob will, um, you know, brighten up the panels. Got ATC bothering me here. You also have your strobe lights. You should have been on. Um, all your lighting for the plane is up here. Then that's just a vent. Looks like we're uh, right on the glide slope here, so this bar is right in the middle. One of the other things is don't open this little window in flight. It does open, but um, it'll crash your plane if you have stress settings that turned on, even if you're below the 132 knots. And you can also open the door by pressing there. Don't do that while you're in flight. So now there's not going to be any call outs on this plane. I'm going to slow down a little bit. want to be about 80 knots. That's what I found works nicely. Uh, the airport we're landing at, I believe, is 103 altitude. Um, I'm not sure, though, so I'm just going to wing it. But as we get closer down, I'm going to turn off my autopilot. As you can see, we're about 400 feet per minute of uh, vertical descent. I do have the winds calm today just because I didn't want any trouble while I was trying to show you it. So about here I'm going to turn off my autopilot. So now I got full control of the plane. Now I'm not great at flying yet so I may have flared a little early but we'll see. Yeah I think I flared a little early there. All right, I'm back, and we're flying at about 8,000 feet right now. So one of the important things you want to look at is your fuel consumption. We're burning uh, 15 gallons per hour right now. And uh, just this says how much I have left in my left fuel tank and my right. Kind of helpful. We also have the temperature here. And this is how much uh, the amperage is really only necessary when you don't have the plane on. You want to see what your draw is. We do have a nice little gauge down here. This shows me, again, my fuel flow in gallons per hour. This has, shows me how much is left on the plane, but by rotating this dial, I can actually get it to show me flight time left, so that's pretty convenient. Now, we actually uh, want to burn a little less than 15, so uh, I'd want to make some adjustments to this plane. We're at full mix right now. You wouldn't want to keep running at full mix at this altitude. In fact, normally I would decrease my mixture as I um, you know, gained altitude. 
one of the easiest ways to do it is by sound, but another good way is looking at this gauge right here. It says 67 horsepower right now. As I pull this back, it's already gone up to 72, 75. I pulled it back again, it just went up to state at 75, state at 75, state at 75. So I keep pulling it back. Now it's even at 76, and see, we're using, um, we should be using less fuel. I'm not sure why it was using more before. Well, I'm getting better horsepower, so that's worth it. All right, 76, 77, 78. So we're still gaining horsepower as I pull back on the mix. We're at 77 horsepower right now. So this is where it went from, it started to drop. So if you wanted to max uh, performance, you generally want to make sure this number is the highest. What I generally do is pull it one more notch out once I get to max performance, sometimes even two notches. As you can see, the horsepower is going down a little bit, but so is my fuel consumption. I'm now burning 13.6. We were burning, uh, before we were burning 15 gallons an hour, and we were only getting about 50 or 60 horsepower. Now we're getting 73 horsepower and we're burning less fuel. So you want to make sure you do that mixture control just so the engine runs a little bit better and uh, you can fly using less fuel, get better range. Also just wanted to show you the trim control. I did have this hidden before. You click right here and it shows you your yoke. This is your manual trim control. The uh, indicator for how you're trimmed is over here. You can see uh, we're pretty much right in the center, maybe a little bit higher than center. Um, you're going to want to set up a knob on your joystick if you can for the trim because you're going to want to make sure the trim's perfect on this plane, especially if you're doing hand flying. Um, so that's pretty much everything you need to know about this plane. If you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments. But um, that's pretty much it. And if anyone knows what um, this knob right here, this elevator trim push on button does, I would like to know. I still don't know. I also don't know what standby vac does on this plane. So if anyone figures those out, feel free. Um, I just put a URL here up on the screen. That's where you can find all the flight manuals and flight procedures. Um, it did come with the plane, so you can see all the emergency procedures and also all the reference speeds and all that. Thanks a lot.